You guys know how home prices across the country and really across the world in many cases went up by basically 40% in most areas. Some areas it went up more, some areas a little bit less, but the percentage that it went up is not really important because actually what's really important is no matter how much it went up, most of it was fake, guys. Yeah, that's right, you heard me. It's fake equity. So what is fake equity, you might ask? Well, basically, guys, it just means it's equity that was unearned that sh never, never should have been there to begin with. And that's exactly what we saw worldwide after so much money was printed by central banks across the world and so much stimulus was given due to the pandemic. And the amount that home prices went up was completely unrealistic. And obviously, we're just now starting to see how unrealistic those increases were now that interest rates are back to a realistic number. Because check this out. Just in the third quarter of 2022, homeowners across the country lost about $1.37 trillion with a T in equity. And that was just in the third quarter. That is an astonishing number. And I am almost certain that that number, that number is going to continue to fall, meaning that more people are going to be losing more and more equity as this housing crash materializes as the economy starts suffering more and more. And to put this into perspective, guys, this is literally the, the sharpest quarter decline in home equity since the year 2000, 22 years. Are you guys picking up on this pattern yet that we are seeing drops in percentages for home prices and equity and mortgage demand, everything like that falling to basically quarter of a century lows. I mean, we're talking 22, 25 years in many cases that these numbers have not reached this level. Anyone who thinks that that's not huge is just not paying attention essentially, guys, because you can't look at figures like that where we're having 25 year lows across the board with different things related to real estate and the economy and not think that this is something to pay attention to and not think that it's a little more serious than maybe what the mainstream media or the government is telling you it is. Now, some people say, well, maybe the government doesn't tell people because they don't want you to panic or maybe it's just ignorance, guys. Maybe they don't even know, you know? Based on a lot of the decisions that they make, it seems like half of these people who are running things are basically clueless. So maybe they don't actually even know how bad it is because they live in their own insulated bubble, you know, making their $200,000 a year salary, living nice, fat, and comfortable. But that's not the case for everybody. And we're starting to see the cracks form all across the board. And this is just the latest installment of it, essentially. And so the places that have seen the largest declines in equity during this third quarter loss have been San Jose, California, Seattle, Washington, and San Francisco, California. And in fact, California accounted for more than half of the national decline in equity. So that's another way you can look at this and say, well, a lot of that equity was fake to begin with because it was, you know? California is basically the most expensive state in the country, and these guys losing a ton of this unearned equity is just more putting things back into equilibrium. We're still a far cry away from what equilibrium probably looks like, but this is just another way that it's helping us get there. But it's going to take time, like I've said before. But if we look at average people, the average person has lost about $30,000 in equity, which doesn't sound like much, but... You know, for the average person, $30,000 is a whole lot of money, guys. But remember, this money, this home equity was unearned to, be, to begin with, and you never really should have had it. You know, in the, in the traditional housing market in the past, before this run-up happened, it was normal for home prices to appreciate roughly 3% per year. That was kind of like the going average. Hotter markets, maybe you would see it go up by like 5 or 6% some years. But to see it go up by 40% in two years is completely unheard of and undeserved, essentially. And these losses in equity might sound like bad news to people, but in reality, it's good news because it means that things are starting to change in our economy that are putting things back into reality, essentially, you know? Wow, check this out, guys.
It's like walking through a mini little jungle over here. Very cool. You even got all these vines and bushes growing all around the house. Interesting. It's funny because I've walked by here before and I never saw this. But you know what? Hearing this information is actually not great for everyone. And who's it not great for? People that bought homes in 2021 and earlier in 2022 are the ones that are going to be suffering the most from this because they are the people that are going to end up essentially underwater on their mortgage like we talked about roughly a week ago. This loss in equity and essentially home valuations is going to hurt these people more than anybody else. And the funny thing about this is it's not me saying this, guys. This is a report from Black Knight and I've been talking about this already for months and Black Knight is coming out and saying now that the people who bought it basically in the last 12 months or so, maybe even the last 14, 15 months, are going to be the most at risk from this continual loss in equity. So can you do anything about it? Not really, guys. You're basically stuck. You know, you already bought the house. You already signed your mortgage documents. You know, forget about selling unless you're willing to take a loss at the closing table. So now your only option is to just hang on to the property for a very long time until the valuations eventually come back to the unrealistic number that it was during this whole rank. One of my viewers, John, I just saw this in a video I posted today. He put in the comments, uh, remember, Michael, that the uh, because of inflation, no matter what the uh, nominal value of the home is right now, it actually has lost value even further than most people realize because when you account for inflation, say a home that was worth $100,000 a year ago and the valuation today is $100,000, well now it's actually only worth about $90,000 when you factor in inflation. And that's if, you know, 10% is the real number. They say it's 8 point whatever, but we all know it's much higher than that just by going to the grocery store and filling up at the gas pump and paying rent, etc. So in reality, inflation is a lot higher. And so even if you just use a conservative estimate of 10%, a house that was worth 100,000 a year ago is now only worth 90,000, even if it still has the $100,000 price tag, because your dollars are worth less. I hope that makes sense. And that's a very good point that John brought up. So it's just another good thing to think about when you're looking at valuations on properties. And keep in mind that the number that you see is already eroded by inflation. So keep that in mind, guys. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on this because we do talk about this a lot. But I just have to bring this up real quick. Like, this just happened, you know, right after I shot my previous video. Redfin, they're doing more layoffs, guys. They are firing 862 people this week and that amounts to about 13 percent of their workforce so that's a pretty big cut for redfin and back in june they laid off 470 people so you know a lot of people have been in denial about all this but just look every week we turn around we're seeing more companies reporting layoffs guys that's a lot of people but guess what that pales in comparison to facebook or meta whatever you want to call it because they're laying off 11,000 people that's insane. That's a lot of people who are going to be out of work this holiday season. And look, guys, November is not even halfway over yet. And you see all these companies that are doing these layoffs just like we've been talking about. So if you think this still isn't happening, you got to wake up because every time we turn around every single week, there are more companies reporting layoffs. And this one from Facebook is huge. So why is Facebook laying off so many people? Well, it turns out that this metaverse thing that they're trying to push isn't working out so well. And by the way, if anybody out there who watches my videos, if you're a part of this metaverse thing, let me know in the comments. I don't know much about it, but from the little bit I've seen about it, it does look totally ridiculous. You know, I'm out here right now walking in real life on the real street, on the real sidewalk and breathing real fresh air. And I love it, guys. This cannot be replicated. I don't care what they come up with, with uh, the metaverse or whatever. Nothing's going to beat that color of the tree over there being super real. And the fact that I can just go up to this olive tree over here and just touch it. Okay. You're never going to be able to replicate that 
from the metaverse. I promise you. And if you can, it's not going to be in our lifetime, most likely. And even if you could, why would you do it? Why wouldn't you just come and visit these beautiful places on our earth in person? If you really want to experience it, nothing's ever going to compare, guys. So that's why they're laying people off. Because the, the bet, the huge bet and the huge investment that they made into this metaverse thing is not working out so great, which is oh, a big surprise that people are not really that into this. And that's why they have to fire all these people. So 